Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, we're gonna extend upon what we did in the previous videos. In the previous videos, we talked about the basic concept of how we uh, look at circuits, how we talk about things like total resistance, total potential, total current. Um, we looked at things like when you go around a loop, right, the net potential difference there is gonna be zero, and that was explained in detail in all the other videos. Any other place that you don't stop where you started, right, if you have an actual potential difference of points A to B, then the potential difference is given by Ohm's law, right? V is equal to IR, the price you pay V is equal to uh, I, the amount of people that go there, times R, how much that shop is charging, okay? So um, one of the things that then we spent a lot of time talking about the idea of series and parallel resistors and talking about how we can decompose them to get a net resistance and from a net resistance and net current, yada, yada, yada. All that was great. And then we started solving some problems with this in, the, in, in another video. But all of those were still what are considered simple circuits because they're simple circuits because even though we might have a network of resistors that may be in series or parallel or some crazy combination of them, right? We didn't talk about other types of combinations of other things. Like what if there's more than one battery in the system? What if there's what if you're given uh, all the resistances, but what if you don't know the uh, the voltage that's present in a battery? Right? So right now, what we've done was if we know the resistances and we know the voltage, we can figure out currents and figure out all the things from there. That's great. But what about the other possible ways of us looking at problems where maybe we don't know what battery we should put on? Maybe we don't know what battery we should like add to a system to make a certain current happen. Or what about the flip side of this, which is in all the ones that we solved so far, we were trying to find the current. What about the cases where you have the current and then you're trying to find the resistances, okay? So just like we always do with everything else, we have to be equipped to solve for any potential variable, get it, potential, uh, any potential variable in a system. And so that's what I want this video to introduce because there is a very straightforward way of getting any type of problem, no matter how complicated the circuit is, of setting these things up. But it does require a little bit of background to understand why that setup works. Now, the good news is we already have what we need based on the previous videos. We just need to add a little bit more to it, and it's really just nothing more than conventions and, uh, and standards for us to agree on. And if we do that, then we'll see that we'll be able to, no matter how complicated the circuit, um, build uh, the, the equations that we would need to solve for any of the unknowns that, may, that we may or may not want. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my screen and let's get it started. Okay, so first and foremost, I wanna make sure that we're still in agreement on certain things, right? This is the symbol for a battery. And again, we say the big side is the positive terminal and left side and smaller side is a negative terminal. This is a resistor, all right? And what do we know? Anything that connects them would be a wire, right? And current, flows, okay? And usually we say that the current, we typically say that we know the direction of the current because it flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, which would mean in this little simple circuit here, when we draw it, we know the direction and it goes to the right. Again, all of that is great for simple circuits. And so what do I mean by this? How is this game gonna slightly change if we just happen to add a couple of different more elements, right? What if we had a battery here and then a resistor, and then we had another battery, but we had its polarity facing this way. What do we do? Which way do we write the current, okay? Turns out, it's not gonna matter which way we write the current, okay? And that's kind of what this video is going to be talking about, is why certain things work and why we're going to do them. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna look at the phone. I wanna still stick with a simple circuit before we start getting to one of these frowny faces up here, okay? Let's stick with a simple circuit for now. So we have, let's say a battery, okay? And let's say that we have a resistor and then we come down here and we have another resistor and let's say that we have another battery, okay? So we have a V1, an R1, an R2, and a V2, okay? And so the nice thing about drawing it this way is that we can clearly see that the current should flow in this direction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's put some points on here. Let's call this point A, let's call this point B, let's call this point C, let's call this point D. That way we have some references if we wanna talk about things like potential difference and stuff like that, okay? Now, what I wanna do is, 
I want to convince you of something that might seem a little bit abstract at first, okay? But it's good. we're going to need a simple circuit to actually do it, okay? We've been talking about the idea that the closed, if you pick any closed loop, so if you start from B and you go back round to B, if you start from C and go back round to C, the potential from any fixed point is going to be zero if you go all the way back around. And each place along the way, we know that Ohm's law sets the potential that you either lose or gain. If you go with a battery, you gain the potential, you go across a resistor, you pretty much lose it. But is that always the case? That's what we got to figure out, okay? Because there's two things at play here. First and foremost, in this simple circuit, we can see the direction of the current, right? Namely, we see here that the current is given. Okay, so let's agree on some standards when we know for a fact the current. Well, before we agree on standards, we have to decide if we're going to do a closed loop, what point are we going to start our analysis from? And not only what, what point are we going to start our analysis from, but what direction are we going to do that analysis? Okay, so I want to start from point B up here. Okay. And the direction that I want to do my analysis is, I'm saying that the loop goes this way, right? So if I start my journey from B, the first thing I encounter is V1. The second thing I encounter is R1, R1, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that's not the only way that I can do this though, right? I mean, like maybe I want to analyze this circuit by starting from B and going down towards A and then to D and then to C, right? Either loop I make, I know, the net potential, as long as I come back to B, no matter which loop I go around, is going to be zero, okay? So you, as the problem solver, as the person um, analyzing this circuit, you get the freedom to make anything you want or either one of those cases valid. So how are we going to agree then if you go one way and I go the other way? Well, again, it all depends on how we draw these things. It all depends on if we know the current or not, okay? so. Here's the standards that we're going to agree on. Let's talk about the standards first for batteries. Okay, here's a battery. Okay. Let's draw the current in green. Let's say the current is flowing this way, the way that the current should be flowing. Okay, right? negative to positive, which again, might not always be necessarily the case depending on how the circuit is drawn, okay? But let's say now, okay, that instead, because maybe we don't know the direction of the current, the one that I gave you up here we did, okay? So let's say that's the direction of the current, okay? But let's say that we analyze the circuit. We're choosing a loop such that when we analyze it, we cross the battery in purple, okay? So as we analyze it, kind of like the analogy that I said a second ago, that if I start from B and go to point C, I am going along from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, okay? I will pick up a positive V in that case. However, let's say that because of whatever reason, my analysis brings me where I want to, I have to an analyze this where I chose a loop that goes against the typical terminal, I'll call that a decrease of V because I'm going backwards across the battery. These are going to be the standards that we agree upon, okay? How about for a resistor? Okay, and then we'll, we'll talk about how current slots into this in a minute. Okay, for a resistor, here we go. Here's our resistor, okay? If, once again, um, let me undo that. If I draw my current in green, okay? So if the current is flowing down across the resistor, okay? And I happen to be analyzing in the direction of the resistor. These are all the ones that we've done so far in simple circuits, right? We know that we lose potential of IR, right? So another way of saying that is, right, we're subtracting this money from our net money in our pocket. However, when the circuits get more complicated. Again, if we had to analyze one where again, the current was flowing this way in green, but we were analyzing it against the current. So purple will be our analysis direction. 
right? This would mean that the resistor would actually give us back some money because we're going against the flow. We're like going back to get our money back in some ways, okay? Now, notice up here, I left out the greens, okay? Now, here's the catch, right? What do we know? We know that resistance always has to be positive, right? We know that voltage, in theory, should always be positive, right? But current can flow left or right, right? It almost has sort of a direction to it. So if we pick up a negative sign, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go too, too far ahead without, without going back and conceptualizing this, okay? So these are the standards that we're gonna follow, okay? Let's apply those standards to this system. And what I'm gonna do, again, is I'm gonna do it first where I analyze it with that loop as drawn in purple. So I'll do a bunch of equations in purple, and then I'll do it again using a different loop to convince you that if you did it one way and I did it another way, as long as we agree on these standards, then we will agree on the actual outcome equations. The benefit of that is that then whatever is given as the unknown, right, will agree on how to actually get there. So let's do it. So I'm gonna do the loop that starts from B and goes clockwise back to B, okay? Again, that's that one that I drew in purple. And I'm gonna follow these standards down here. So when I start my adventure from B, the first thing I encounter is a battery and I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, I'm going in the proper direction. So I pick up a potential V1. Then I go with the current, across the resistor, so I lose some money. How much do I lose? Remember, Ohm's law sets the rules here in town, right? That everywhere you go across the resistor, it's IR, and it's negative here because we're going with the flow. We had to pay to get through that building. I then get the C, I get down to D, nothing happens because there's nothing in between C and D. But then I'm still going with the flow, and I have to go into R2. And then what happens, I go across another battery, I put some money back into my pocket V2, and then I go from A to B, nothing happens there, but once I get back to B, I have went around a closed loop, and so that would be a net potential difference of zero. Notice, we haven't solved for anything, but what did we do? We generated an equation that we know has to be true, again, because the potential difference between any two points where that start point is the same as the end point, is zero. Now you can see where this would be beneficial because if you know if you knew all the resistances and one of the batteries, for example, and you wanted to find out what that other battery was, here now we bought ourselves an equation that we can use to solve for an unknown. Just to link this to what we did in one of the previous videos, what is a conclusion here that we can make about I1 and I2? Yeah, that's right, they're gonna be the same, right? Because every, there was no junctions here at all, right? Any current that left one of these dormitories had to go through the other dormitory, and these are safe parties or safe restaurants at ours. So um, I1 here, yes, I could have just wrote as a general I or I total, however you wanna write it, okay? Um, and that would have been valid as well, okay? Now, Let's make sure that we're all in agreement first that if I picked a different loop, I would get the same results, okay? Namely, what if I started from C and I went in the same direction? What is my resulting equation, right? So this is someone going in the same direction of analysis that I'm doing, but this student uh, maybe just picks a different starting point. Are we doomed to never agree on answers? No, we gotta definitely agree on answers. So in green, we'll do the loop C, again, clockwise, back to C. So the first thing we do is we go from C to D and nothing happens, right? Then we go across R2 with the flow of the current, so we lose I2, R2. We go from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery V2, so we pick up a V2. We go from A to B and nothing happens. We go across the negative terminal to the positive terminal of V1. We go across R1 in the direction of current and it's zero. And so if we take a look, okay, this term matches up exactly with this term. 
this term matches up exactly with this term. Match, 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 match equals zero. We generated the same equations from picking two different starting points as long as we go by those standards. But let's make sure that we really got the hang of this, right? And by the way, picking those two different starting points, if they generate the same equation, it's redundant. We never have to do that more than once, right? Because the same equation, we can't solve that for one thing and plug it into another because it's still the same equation, okay? However, what about the other case? What if we go backwards? Okay, what if we go backwards? Namely, what if a student said, I'll start from B, but I wanna do it in this direction. I wanna do it counterclockwise. Cool. So we're gonna do that in red. That's a loop. Start from B and go back to B, except for this time we're gonna do it counterclockwise. Okay? So if we do it counterclockwise, what's the first thing we do? We go from B to A, nothing happens. Then we go from A, and the first thing that we encounter is a battery, but we go from the negative to, I'm sorry, from the positive to the negative. So the first thing that we get is a negative V2. Then the next thing that we get is we go across a resistor, but we're going against the current. So we pick up an I2, R2. Then we go from D to C. Again, we go against the current, so we get a positive I1. Oh gosh, come on. Really? R1. And again, now we go across the battery from positive to negative, so we lose that V1, and that's equal to zero. And if you stare at this, this one, compared to any one of these two, right? Because we already agreed that the purple equation and the green equation are the same thing, right? They look similar, but it might not be obvious to you right away that they are the same equation. Well, let's take a look. Oh man, if we compare purple to red, it looks almost the same, except all of my Vs are now at negative and all the ones with my Is are now positive, right? It's almost the exact opposite. But my argument to you is that that's exactly the same equation since you have two things that are positive, two things that are negative, they add to zero, and they're all the opposing things. Namely, another way of saying this, that is, what if I moved every term in this equation down here to the other side? I'd have to add V2 to both sides. I'd have to add V1 to both sides. I then have to subtract I2, R2 from both sides, subtract I1, R1 from both sides, and now we recognize that, yeah, it's exactly the same equation. The first iteration of it looked like it was just the exact negative of that equation, which is true, and since it's equal to zero, if we had to solve algebraically for any one of those uh, unknowns in there, then yeah, it would be give us the exact same formula. Now, that's how we use these standards, okay? Now, the first thing that should come to your mind, if, if that really sunk in, right, the big question that should come to your mind is, okay, James, well, you had this case up here about frowny face, right? What if you had a situation where you did not know the direction of current? Because the current, as you see, didn't actually matter for the batteries to get the positive or negative. All that mattered was which way we're evaluating the closed loop. But the current definitely mattered when we did the resistors because we were asking ourselves, are we going with the flow or are we going against the flow, okay? So here's where physics is wonderful to us once again, but I know this is one of the places that not everybody loves this idea, right? This is one of the places where physics says, you have the freedom to do this any way you want, kind of like these standards that we just set up and you can go counterclockwise or clockwise, yada, 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 okay? As long as we follow these standards and we believe the following, then we'll be okay. If we have a situation back up here, the frowny face situation, okay? Where maybe we don't know the direction of current, all we have to do is assume or pick a direction of the current and then apply these standards, okay? If we do that, then at worst, when we solve for one of these values, 
we might get a negative, like we might get a negative value for the battery, which means that we just drew the current in the opposite direction. We just drew it wrong. We assumed it to be wrong. So we know then if we got a negative five amps instead of five amps or something like this, right? We just flip the direction of it. But the value, the magnitude that we'll be solving for will have to be the same no matter how you assume the current to be. So what am I really saying then? These standards are good whether the current is given or not. So the ones that we like is when the current is given, either numerically or just direction-wise. But if the current is not given, then draw it in as you like and follow your standards. The magnitude of the value you solve for will still be correct. And we're going to have lots of examples in the upcoming weeks to unpack these. Okay. Before we do that, though, I want to make sure I don't want to solve any problems today. I just want to set up equations because that's all we're doing here, right? Is, is showing you how to set up equations by solving these standards by using nothing more than the fact that delta V around a closed loop is zero. And of course, if we had a junction, which here we didn't have any junction, but if we had a junction, then of course the current that flows in has to be equal to the current that flows out. Let's look at how one of those would look and see if we can set up all of the individual equations that we can get from it. Let's look at something like the following. Let's say we start from a battery, okay? And then we go through a junction. Okay, these are all the elements. Let's call this E1, E2, R1, R2, R3. So three resistors, two voltages, okay? In a typical problem, you would be given some of these, some you know, some you don't, but that's irrelevant for right now, okay? And let's assume for this one that they didn't tell us the directions of the currents. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each loop and write out what Ohm's law gives us by going around each one of those loops, okay? So let's do that. That's the first thing we should do is we should identify how many loops do you see? I see one loop, which is the left interior loop. Let's put some points on here so that we can see what I'm talking about. C, D, E, F. So what I'm calling loop one is the left interior loop, which goes from A to B to E to F. Do we all agree that's a closed loop? I guess, well, back to A, right? Okay. What I'm calling loop two and I'm gonna put the loop numbers in green, is the rightmost loop, right? That's the loop that goes from B to C to D to E, and then of course, back to B. Again, why do we have to go back to the starting point? Because that's how we exploit that delta V around a closed loop is zero. Last but not least, loop three. Ah. is me going from A to B to C to D to E to F and back to A, namely the outer loop, right? The big loop on the outside. Those are the three loops that I see. Any closed loop you go around, the change in potential has gotta be zero, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna follow those standards that we had a couple of minutes ago. Okay, and see if we can then build the equations that tell us 
delta v around those closed loops to zero. If that's the case, what I'm going to do is I just want to bring these rules up to the other side. That way we have them close by. And I'm going to shrink them down a little bit, right? But just so that they're here in the corner as we as we do it. Okay, so here we go. Again, I always, just for me personally, I like to start from the top left, okay? Which means for the first one, I'm gonna start at point A, and I like to go clockwise, okay? I have to pick a direction for the currents. I don't know which way they go. I'm gonna assume that current one flows this way, but now I have more currents. Again, I'm gonna assume that current two comes this way, because again, I want I would like it to flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Those two flow into uh, B, and so as I drew it, then I would then assume that this current flows down this way. Okay, let's build all the equations that we can. Starting from A, the first thing I do is go from point A to point B, nothing happens. Then I go down and I go across a resistor R1, in the direction of the current I3, not I1 anymore because we had a junction. So I pay a price. I lose I3 R1. I then get to point E, okay? Now I'm back to current I1, yes? And I'm going in the direction of the current. Again, if you don't see that, notice I1 is up here, which the only way it could be that way is if that arrow continues, yes? Like a round and round, okay? So I'm going across R2 in the direction of current. So again, I lose an I1, R2, but then I go across the battery E1, and now I'm back to where I started, and I pick up a zero. I'm sorry, I pick up an E1, and, the, and when I add those, when we get back, it, it is zero. As you can see then, we have built an equation that would be valid if we had to solve for any uh, one of these if they were unknown, I1, I3, E1, R1, R2. But that equation doesn't help us if the unknown was I2, right? Well, that's because I2 is gonna appear in the other equations, in the other loops. I2 did not factor into this loop at all, okay? Let's go to those other loops. So, loop two, starting from B and going all the way around. Again, I like to start from the top left and go counterclockwise. You know, I, I did the first one in, in red, so I'm gonna keep doing it in red, okay? So I start from B, I go to C, nothing happens. I go from C down to D. I'm now going against the flow of current the opposite way across the battery. I lose an E2. I then go down, okay? And again, these arrows have to continue all the way around like a circle, okay? I the next thing I encounter is a resistor, but I'm going against the current of the resistor. So I pick up an I2, R3. Then I get to point E and I go from point E back to point B. And what am I doing? Again, I'm going against the flow of the current. So I pick up an I3, R1, and I'm back to where I started. So those would be equal to zero. Let's finish off the third loop, and then I want to regenerate these equations, but by going counterclockwise instead to, again, convince you that any way you do it, we have to agree on the answers. And it'll also just give you more practice applying these. But loop three, the big outer loop. Again, I like to start from the leftmost place, leftmost place, or top left is point A, and I go. I go from A to B, nothing happens. I go from B to C, nothing happens. I go from D, uh, uh, I'm sorry, from C to D, something does happen. I go across the battery, but I go from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So I lose an E2. Then I go, again, against the current. So I pick up an I2, R3. But now I'm going from point E to F, and I'm going with the current I1 minus I1, R2 is equal to zero. Those are the three equations that I get from the three loops, again, on each one of them, starting from the top left and going counterclockwise. Now, there is one other equation that has to be true. 
in this, right? Since we had a junction, the amount of current that flows into a junction has to be the same as the amount of current that flows out. Pick either junction you want. The junction at B, what do we see? I1 flows in, I2 flows, flows in, I3 flows out. Pick junction E. I3 flows in, I1 flows out, I2 flows out. Either way you write it, you get the same exact formula. So from, <coughs> from a circuit with just looking like this, right? Three loops, we were able to generate four equations that link all this stuff together, okay? Those have to be true. And again, how do we do it? I assumed the direction of those currents and I just went ahead and followed our standards that are up in the top right-hand corner. Now, let me convince you that you're gonna get the same result if you went clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So I'm gonna do all of those now in purple, okay? So what if I went this way? Again, I'm gonna stop from the, start from the top left in each one of these, right? So I go from A and I go to F now, okay? What happens, I go the opposite direction around, uh, across a battery, so I lose an E1. I go against the current I3 across resistor, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blind. I, I go against the current I1, across the resistor R2. And then when I go from E to B, again, I'm going against the current, which is now I3, across the resistor R1, and I'm back to where I started. And if you look at that red equation and the purple equation, they are the exact same equation, except everywhere in red was a positive, is everywhere in purple a negative, which is another way of saying that if you moved everything from one side to the other, you would get the exact same equation. Let's do it quickly for the other two as well to make sure that we're all in agreement. For the rightmost loop, starting from point B and going down, I now go with the direction of current flow um, from R1 to, uh, I'm sorry, of I3. So I pick up, I'm sorry, I lose an I3 R1 because I'm going in the direction of current. I'm going in the direction of current of R3 of I2 across R3. And now I go across the negative terminal to the positive terminal of, the, of E2. And so that behaves like a regular battery. Once again, take a look at it. I get everything exactly equal but opposite what I had in the equation beforehand. Last but not least, the outermost loop. I need to zoom out a little bit to do this, okay? Starting from point A, the top left, and going around now counterclockwise, okay? The first thing I go across is the battery E1, but I go from positive terminal to negative terminal, so I lose an E1. Oh gosh, what did I do in loop three? In loop three, I never finished it. Nobody yelled at me, but I guess you can't yell at me because I'm making a video by myself. Going back up here, after I go across uh, I1 and R2, I get back to the battery E1, yes? Okay, now it's actually a complete loop or else we would have not had a complete loop there. Okay, anyway, back to purple. Going back to purple, I now go for, so I, I, we have a negative for the battery again, so I went from the positive terminal to the negative. Now I'm going against the current I3, I'm sorry, I1, across the resistor R2. Then to go from point E to D, I'm going with the current I2 across R3. And then I'm going across the battery in proper fashion. And if we look at each one of these terms, they are equal but opposite in purple what they were in red, which is exactly what we should expect. The way that you get a result, versus the way that I get a result, we should be able to have the freedom and flexibility of all this um, as long as we agree on the standards and those are the standards right there. Okay, all that I did in this video was introduce the standards and um, give you the tools necessary to set up these equations for all these given loops. You should draw your own, okay, draw your own, See if you can follow these standards. Start instead of from point A's on each of these, see if you can do this. Or 
draw the currents differently and convince yourself that the equations that you get are still gonna match, okay? Any way you choose to do it, you have, this video requires a little bit of practice to get those, um, to get those ideas across, okay? And once those ideas sink in, then we realize that these equations that we're generating in each one of these, these are the key to us being able to solve for any unknown that I might be able to give you. And as you can see, we can, it doesn't matter how more complicated or less complicated I make the circuit, all we're really doing is following two rules. Three, the change around a closed loop is zero. The current flowing into a junction has to be the same as the current flowing out, even if you assume which way the directions go, that's still gotta be true. It's a physical law, conservation of charge. And the third one, is that at any place that we either, any resistor, right? V is equal to IR, right? That's the amount of money you either spend or get refunded, depending on if you're going with the crowd or against the crowd, okay? So that analogy about us going to stores or restaurants or parties, whatever you wanna call it, leaving our dorm rooms, the batteries, right? Those analogies still hold up, okay? In the next video, we're gonna start from this as our baseline, assuming that, that all this makes sense, and we're gonna jump right into problem solving. Okay, and we'll look at a couple of simple circuits. Um, we'll, we'll be given some information uh, and some information we're missing. We'll, so, we'll do this for each one of the loops to make sure that we can set up the, these rules again, and then we'll solve those for those unknowns. So again, don't jump into the next video about problem solving until you're okay with setting up each of those individual equations and of which we did quite a few in that one for those two uh, circuits that we just did. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as always, if you have any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, if you're ready to move on to the next video, jump right in right now while the brain is going. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a wonderful weekend.